So hello guys, what's up and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's me your girl Barista Neze and this is Nezeville. Once upon a time, not a very long time ago, there was a young man called Timothy Adegoke. He was born in August of 1984 in Oyo State, western part of Nigeria. There he attended his primary and secondary education. When he graduated from high school, Timothy then proceeded to the Polytechnic Ibadan for his tertiary education. Having completed his course at the Polytechnic, this young man who so many people describe as industrious and unrelenting secured a job with Xiamen Winstone, a professional Chinese granite slate and special stone supplier from China. Through his doggedness, intelligence and skills, Timothy was able to climb up the corporate ladder, rising to become the company's director of finance, a role he played diligently and assiduously. Timothy found love and tied the knot with the love of his life, Bola Tito. Their marriage is blessed with three children, two boys and a daughter. You see, Timothy was not born into a rich family. Not born with a silver spoon is perhaps a needless exaggeration. He was born with no spoon at all. He bore plenty of financial responsibilities and burdens on his shoulders. The financial pressure from his new family as a dad and a husband and the financial pressure from the family he was coming from as a brother and the son. He was a breadwinner to a lot of dependents and he had no other option but to double his hustle as a lot of mouths depended on him for feeding. On that note amongst others, Timothy realized that a first degree certificate from a polytechnic will only take him so far. He believed that he had to further his education, upgrade his qualifications to position him for more rewarding opportunities. Hence, the 37 year old father of three struggled and was able to secure admission at the Obafemi Awolowo University to obtain an MBA in accounting. He was grateful for the opportunity. Timothy was resident in Abuja, so periodically he would leave the capital city of Abuja in the north and travel all the way to the south to a town called Ife in Oshu State. He will go to the Obafemi Awolowo University Distant Learning Center there in Moro to take exams and attend to other important school activities. Past receipts and verbal testimonies from Bola Tito, Timothy's wife, revealed that he usually lodged in a hotel called the Hilton Royal Hotel, located there in Ife. On the 5th of November 2021, Timothy had left home and embarked on the long journey to Oshu State. It was usually a strenuous one, considering the distance, the cost implications, and the inconvenience of being away from his loving wife and his little children. But on this particular trip, he perhaps left happy, optimistic and in high spirits. High spirits due to the fact that he was off to take his final examinations. One that would eventually bring an end to the frequent trips. The stress, the late night studying. One that would make him a proud MBA holder. I bet he couldn't wait. And so he left. When he got to the airport at Abuja, he called his wife to inform her that he had gotten there and they were about to embark on the journey. When he got to Akure, where he was supposed to deliver an item to his wife's friend, he also called her to inform her that her friend had taken delivery of the item. And when he eventually checked into the hotel, he placed a call across to his wife once again to keep her updated. He was the kind of man who loves to carry his wife along 
every step of his activities. They had a closely bonded relationship. About 8 p.m. on the same day, his wife called him to report one of their children to him. Trust we women and how we can blow some of our children's mistakes totally out of proportion, expecting their dads to perform some kind of miracle and change the child immediately. So she called to report a child to him and he managed to calm her down, assuring her that he was going to address it later, but that he needed to rest his head, take a little nap as he intended to wake up at midnight to study hard for the exams that were slated for only a few hours away. And so she let him sleep. They said their goodbyes and she went to bed. But that would be the very last time that Bola Tito would ever get to hear the voice of her husband. While testifying as a witness in a trial that will eventually ensue, Bola Tito narrated that the next day, Saturday, November 6th of 2021, the day her husband was supposed to take the exam, she waited in vain for his call but never got it. It was common practice between them for him to always call her to inform her when he's about to get into the examination hall. So it was disturbingly unusual for her when the morning was far spent and she still hadn't gotten his call that day. And so she began calling him repeatedly. She called once, twice, thrice, and she couldn't get through to him. Call it intuition, apprehension, or fear, but Bola Tito broke down and began crying. She continued calling his phone non-stop until 4 p.m. in the evening. There was no response. Her panic began growing. She called a church member to inform him of the situation at hand, but he allayed her fears, assuring her that everything was well and that it was too soon to start panicking. But Paula Tito still had that gut feeling, that feeling that wouldn't go away, that something was wrong. And so she called her husband's office there in Abuja to inform them of the situation. That night, Bola Tito didn't get a wink of sleep. She stayed up all night, hoping and praying that her husband was safe and well. But was he? On Sunday, the 8th of November, that being two days after she last spoke with her husband, she called one of her husband's sisters in Oshobo to help her go to the exam hall and check and confirm if her husband had been there. His sister did go to check. And to her greatest dismay, the reports came back that her husband was neither in the exam hall nor had he taken the examinations a day before. Now going into full-blown panic, Bola Tito called one of her husband's friends who is a chartered accountant there at Ife, begging him to please go check the hotel, the Hilton Hotel in Ife, where her husband had told her that he lodged. He did go. And when he got there, he was informed by members of staff of that hotel that nobody bearing that name lodged into the hotel. Mm -hmm. Bola Tito felt her spirit leave her body. She checked some documents of her husband from previous trips, previous receipts, and she saw receipts of the Hilton Hotel. She quickly took some pictures and forwarded it to the team there at Ife, working to find her husband. A missing persons complaint was then lodged at the police station. Those past receipts from Hilton also submitted and the police began their investigations. On the 15th of November 2021, only a few days later, Timothy's remains were found. He was found lying in a shallow grave just by the bush at Ileife Ede Road. He was stone dead. And so the big question was, what happened to Timothy at Degoke? What happened at the Hilton Royal Hotel? What happened in room 305 on the 5th of November 2021? The Hilton Royal Hotel is owned by Dr. Rahman Adedoi. Rahman is an educationist, a businessman, 
and a multi-millionaire entrepreneur. He is the founder and proprietor of Ududowa University and the Polytechnic Ilefe. Call him purple blood. Dr. Ramon was born into a royal family there in the ancient kingdom of Ife in Oshu State. After he completed his primary and secondary education, he proceeded to the University of Ife where he bagged a BSc in mathematics education. No, he didn't stop there. He proceeded to obtain a doctorate degree from the All Saints University School of Medicine in New York City, America. He is a fellow of the Nigerian Institute of Industrial Statistics. He is a man of means. Guys, can we stop for a second and spot the sharp contrast between these two men? We have Timothy on the one hand, poor background, struggling young man, no connections, no godfather, no royal blood, swimming against the high tides to keep his head above water. And on the other hand, we have Dr. Rahman, purple blood, rich and influential, well-traveled, connected, highly educated, serial business tycoon. But these two men, in a sick twist of fate, would bring about the deaths of each other. So let us go back to the story. After Timothy's remains were discovered from the bush, an autopsy was conducted and it was revealed that he did not die from natural causes. Rather, he passed from violent trauma to his body. On the night Timothy died, after he was murdered in his hotel room, a space he paid heavily to get safety, comfort and shelter, Rahim, the managing director of the hotel, who is also Ramon's son, the owner's son, <laughs> family business, removed and dismantled and destroyed the CCTV which covered the floor where Timothy was lodged, altered the receipt that was issued to Timothy when he lodged into the hotel, burnt the mattress that had the blood stains of Timothy and then gathered all the staff involved into a room where he made them swear an oath of secrecy to take that incident to the grave. They waited until midnight and then they carried the remains of the man who they just made his wife a widow and his children fatherless, threw him in a hillox van and then drove to a lonely roadside and dumped him there. All the personal items he came with, including his mobile device, his laptop, money, were thrown away alongside with him, beside him, thinking what? Thinking that it was done? Thinking that it was all over, they would just move on and live happily ever after? After committing such heinous crime? Well, no. Timothy's blood cried for justice. As police investigations deepened, it became clearer and clearer what had happened. And when they had gathered all the evidences they needed, they swapped in. Arresting six members of staff of the hotel, and eventually arresting Dr. Ramon. They were charged with 11 felonies, including conspiracy to commit murder, murder, unlawful killing, attempted felony, accessory after the fact, indecent interference with a dead body, administering extrajudicial oaths, amongst others. It is sad to note that the MD, Dr. Ramon's son, who played lead role in this whole crime, absconded before the police could get to him. He remains at large until this moment. This ugly development sparked widespread outrage. A lot of people were demanding justice, insisting that this case must not be swept under the carpet because of the man involved is rich and influential. It was popular belief that Timothy was killed for ritual purposes and was immediately disposed when they got the inkling that his wife was looking for him and the police was involved. A lot of people even suspected that Timothy may not be the first victim in that hotel and that its owner and management has been carrying this kind of act along for a long time, using its guests for ritual purposes, but this time, the cup was full. After investigations were concluded, Timothy's remains 
were then released to his family for a proper and befitting burial. He was buried amidst heartbreak, tears, and wailing. The matter was charged to court. So the case began in court with the chief judge of Osho State, Justice Adepele Ojo, sitting as presiding judge and popular human rights lawyer Femi Falano standing as counsel to the deceased family. After a, well, not so lengthy trial by Nigeria's standards, a few hours ago, the Honorable Justice Ojo have finally pronounced judgment. Long awaited, highly anticipated judgment. Having critically reviewed and weighed the evidences from both parties, the prosecution and the defendants, the judge found Dr. Ramon, the owner of the Hilton Royal Hotel and two others guilty of the offense of murder. Thus, they have been sentenced to die by hanging. The Honorable Court also declared his son Rahim wanted and ordered immediate forfeiture of the hotel where the crime was committed as well as the helix vehicle that conveyed the deceased person to the dumping ground she didn't stop there she went further to order that dr adedoyi will pay the school fees of timothy's children from the proceeds of the estates of these culprits <sighs> Many people consider this justice served. What do you think? Do you think that there is any other thing that her lordship could have added or removed? Or do you think that it was a fair and perfect outcome? That, my dear brothers and sisters, brings us to the end of the sad, sad story of Timothy Adegoke, the ambitious, unrelenting young man whose only crime was wanting better for himself and his family. Justice is indeed a big relief, perhaps a quicker path to finding closure. But if only justice could bring back the dead, if only justice can take the whole pain away, if only justice can turn back the hands of time and offer full restitution, if only death was reversible. Thank you so much guys for joining us on today's episode. If you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, turn on your bell notifications, drop all your feedback, thoughts and experiences down in the comments section and stay glued because we have so much more coming your way. It's me, your girl Barista Neze and this is Nezeville. I'll see you guys in my next one for now. Bye.